there were undoubtedly many nice slaveholders in the South. This is not meant facetiously, again. It's meant literally. It's Dennis Prager trying to make a comment about how there were nice slave owners in America. You know, individuals who purchased humans to force them to work for them for free and would beat them, whip them, rape them. Nice slave owners. Now, uh, you know, what a, what, a great, what a great Christian Dennis Prager is. Why don't we hear more about these so-called nice slave owners? If you, if you had been invited to one of their homes, you, you would have been treated beautifully. But they supported a vicious system. The left is a vicious system. It's not slavery. Although the end result of all leftism is the enslavement of populations, not as in transatlantic slave trade or chattel slavery, but in the diminution of human rights and liberties, which is a form of enslavement. Fascinating argument. So first, let's, let's address what he's saying piece by piece here, Cenk. So number one, he makes the argument that, you know, the whole system of slavery, not so nice, but the people who practiced that practice what was required of that system in terms of having slaves, those people themselves, even though they believed in that system, used that system to their advantage, they're not, they're not bad people. They just, you know, treated human beings as property and were vicious to those human beings. But they weren't bad people. I mean, they might invite you to, your home, to their home and they'd cook you a nice dinner. They'd be super nice if you were a white American, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let, let me jump in on that one. Um, so if we're being super generous to Dennis Prager, uh, he's saying, well, slavery was vicious, but even so, uh, some of the people who uh, participated in it uh, were nice people. They would treat you nicely. And so don't be fooled by people being nice. OK, so that's the most generous interpretation of what Prager is saying. But look at his assumptions. Like, it doesn't even occur to him that anyone in his audience is black. Because if you were black, they would not have treated you nicely. They might have literally taken you out into the back and whipped you or raped you instantly. That would not have been a very nice way to treat you, right? Uh, but, he, but he thinks, well, I mean, it would have been nice to me. Good enough, good enough, right? Uh, so that is among the problems here. Uh, I'm going to get back to his comments on the left and how it's like slavery later, because I think that's really important. Um, but I wanted to make one more, uh, just one uh, quick correction. Prager is Jewish, by the way. He's not Christian. And you would be surprised by that because he kisses Christian nationalist ass 24-7. Why? Because that's where his bread is buttered. So, and that's where his audience is. So he's like, oh, Christian right is awesome. And oh, just please include me, please include me. I mean, later when, you know, Armageddon happens and you murder all the Jews, oh, it's okay, it's okay, as long as you keep sending the checks. I actually didn't know that uh, because of all the ass kissing he does to Christians. That's pretty surprising. Um, yeah. But, you know, I can kind of understand why Prager based on First of all, the lack of logic, but also it seems like he's sedated. And that makes me understand why he would run away from all the leftists who have challenged him to a debate, myself included, by the way. Um, but nonetheless, uh, let me give you some more of what he had to say. So this is not the first time that Prager has equated benign things um, to slavery. So, for instance, him mentioning leftism or leftist ideology as something that's as evil and terrible as slavery. He was previously condemned for claiming unvaccinated Americans are the most hated group of people since slavery in an attack on COVID vaccinations in November of last year. By the way, I would be shocked if Dennis Prager wasn't fully vaccinated. Absolutely shocked. I, I bet you anything he is. Um, and remember, this is the guy who just last week was talking about how the most evil people who need to be controlled are women. 
because women, he argues, uh, are overwhelmingly represented in jobs like teaching. And he thinks that teachers, like there's grooming students is prevalent among teachers. Like that's, that's his logic. There's no evidence for that. Absolutely no evidence, no statistics, nothing that he can point to to prove that. But his whole mission in life is to go around defaming all sorts of innocent people because he's terrified of women for some reason, probably because women are terrified of him. And I, like he just provides no evidence for anything he says. He says the most vicious things about people he happens to disagree with politically. And then he goes so far as to say that slaves were, or slave owners were nice people. But to be fair to him, he believes in powerful people having the ability to control other people's bodies. I mean, he's fighting for that today by trying to ban abortion, by having the government tell women what they can and can't do with their own bodies. So to be fair to him, I can understand why he would, you know, empathize with slave owners. Yeah, uh, last thing, uh, these lunatic right-wingers uh, think that we want to control their lives. Dude, we want to stay as far away from your life as humanly possible, okay? We actually believe in freedom, unlike you. So, but they project their oppression and their insanity onto us. Oh, the left wing wants to imprison. I don't care about you. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone, you dumbass, okay? Uh, but every one of their audience thinks, oh, well, we want to oppress the, the left wing and control their lives completely. Tell them when they can and can't have kids and who they can and can't sleep with and who what they can smoke and what they can drink. And so they must want to do the same thing to us. No, we don't actually believe in oppression because we're not right wingers. Get it out of your stupid heads.